Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the next kit in my Plastic Models for Beginners series. For this series uh, I've chosen the Tamiya M3A1 Scout Car and 135th scale. It's a relatively new tooling, 2018, and uh, from everything I've seen and read on videos and uh, reviews and such, it's a very good kit. And uh, goes together easily, not overly complex, and uh, a single color vehicle. And that is pretty much the reason why I chose this for the next um, Plastic Models for Beginners kit. So before we dig into the box and take a look at what uh, I'm going to be using and what uh, materials and tools I'm going to be using, um, Here's the plan. The plan is to build this kit strictly from the box with the basic paint job on it. That'll be one series of videos. Building the kit and painting it. Then I'll do the next series which will be weathering the kit and I'll talk about uh, weathering supplies and stuff like that. And then possibly a third video in the series on how to um, build and paint figures. But that one's going to depend on how much I get accomplished in uh, getting a little bit better at doing the figures myself. <clears throat> but that'll be a little bit further down the road. So let me talk real quick about um, the kit itself and then what tools and supplies I'm going to be using to just do the basic build uh, and get it up to the point where it's ready for weathering. So first thing is the instructions and uh, basically the booklet type instructions that Tamiya provides nowadays which is kind of nice that it's a booklet style instead of the old map fold out that can be a real pain. But uh, just basically goes through everything in the kit here and um, Typical to me instructions. Um, in each step, it will tell you, you know, what needs to be built, um, if a decal needs to be applied, uh, if something needs to be painted, um, what order the parts need to be attached. So parts one, two, one and one, two, and then three. Um, and I'm going to really try and build this according to the instructions and only deviate when absolutely necessary. That means I'm going to build the kit and I'm going to uh, then paint everything once it's done, which is kind of unusual for me, but a lot of people do it. A lot of people feel comfortable that way. I figured that's the way I'd do it in this particular case. Um, Subassemblies, and then there's obviously the figures, but again, that will be a separate video because those can be added later. Um, I will double check the driver. We may do the driver as part of the kit, um, but I'll have to see how he fits in the seat and if he can be added later. And then there's basically two color schemes uh, there is Red Army, 3rd Guards, uh, Tank Army, Eastern Germany, April 45. And then there is U.S. Army, 82nd Armored Recon, or Reconnaissance Battalion, 2nd Armored Division, Sicily, 1943. And that's a two-tone. Um, but I'm going to do the uh, Soviet version, the Red Army version, because... Oh, actually, there's two Red Army versions, I'm sorry. Unit Unknown. Spra Prague Spring 45. So I kind of needed to figure out which one of those two I'm going to do. Um, probably thinking about this one since it's a little simpler as far as the markings go. Less decals they have to apply, uh, which means less carrier film and everything else. But um, as it sits, this will probably be the one. And because it does come with Soviet figures, I'm going to be able to use them all. So this would be the way to go. 
So um, that's the first thing that came out of the box. Now I'll talk a little bit more about the paints here in a little bit when we get to the supplies, but for now, that's that. So the other thing they supply is a cool little uh, informational pamphlet about the vehicle. Um, It gives some information about how it came about, uh, the design of it, uh, in U.S. service, a new lease of life. Um, it's talking about the Lynn Lease Program, which is how the Soviets were able to obtain these vehicles. So it's just a little bit of information. It's kind of cool to read up on it and learn a little bit about uh, what the vehicle is all about. It's kind of a nice addition. Then we have the decals. And this is the one that goes on that one vehicle. That's a really big decal. These are smaller, a little bit more manageable than the US decals. So there's the, those. <clears throat> All right, and then naturally you got the uh, poly caps for doing wheels. Then we get two, sprue A, which is wheels and some other fittings and stuff, stuff for the machine guns, seats, fuel cans, that kind of thing. Then you got, there's two of the sprue A's by the way. Then there's one sprue B, which is the chassis, fenders, hood, armored uh, vision thing, back plate, the uh, race for the um, Machine gun mounts, sprue C, which is the floor, uh, another part of the back of the vehicle, and the sides, which are two largest pieces, which are kind of nice, and then the armored uh, um, covers for the side door windows. Sprue D, which is a bunch of small stuff, suspension parts, driver's area parts, more well, you got exhaust, more stuff for underneath the vehicle, Pioneer tools, more mounts, headlight guards, tripod. Then we have sprue AA, which is ammo boxes, uh, 50 cal machine gun. Then we got sprue BA, which is 30 caliber machine gun, a tripod more ammo cans for that and a mount and then sprue PS which or I'm sorry F which is the uh, clear parts glass and a couple of headlight lenses and lastly we have the figure sprue now I think what I am going to do is I think I am going to incorporate the driver into uh, the actual build of the vehicle just to do one figure so um, I think that is figure E which is these parts so we'll focus just on one guy and then we'll paint him he should be fairly simple because you're just wearing a black uh, looks like a black leather or black uniform armor soldier uniform or something but we'll we'll get into that later so that's all the parts. So let's talk about the stuff we're gonna use. So basically this is my little box of the usual stuff that I use. Um, I have my hobby knife, I have another spare handle for small saws or other blades, tweezers, some thin sanding sticks, toothpicks, and my nice cutters, which I've discussed many times. And I've got another assortment of sanding sticks that we'll probably be using, as well as some sanding sticks that are more like sponges, which we'll probably be using those as well. Then as far as supplies, we got the old Tamiya Extra Thin and Model Master Liquid, which is a little bit thicker, which I like to use for certain parts. Um, I'll be using Microsol and Microset for the decals and possibly, depending on how the decals behave, uh, Walter's Solvacet for settling the decals in really well to get them to conform to details. For the overall color, I will be using, well, let's talk about the colors. 
Let's get the color instructions out here. So in instructions, you zoom in a little bit here. You may not be able to see it, but for the primary color, they have listed TS5, which is olive drab, but it's in a spray can. Well, I'm not using spray cans, I'm using an airbrush, so I'll be using XF62. Next color, which is TS46, light sand, I will not be using because that's for the uh, um, US version in Sicily. Uh, we have X1, black, X7, red, which the only thing that is for is for the tail light. Um, then we have X10, which is gunmetal. So for that, I'm actually going to be using Vallejo Metal Color Steel, which works pretty well and is easy to brush on. Um, for the black, I'm going to be using, I'm not using X1 because uh, for brush painting, I prefer to use water-based acrylics. They work a little bit better, so I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo Model Color Black. Uh, let's see, then we have the gunmetal, and then we have X11, which is chrome silver. For that, I will be using Vallejo Metal Color Aluminum, which will give a good approximation to chrome silver. X12, which is gold leaf, I will not be using. I'll be using uh, Tester's Enamel uh, Gold. That is going to be for um, the shell casings. Uh, semi-gloss black. I'll just be using the black, you know, just the regular black because I think those are for boots and they're going to be all weathered up anyway. XF1 flat black. We've already discussed that. Flat white. I'm going to be using Vallejo model color. Flat white. Then we have copper, which um, I have to mix something up with the gold to get copper or I'll just have to buy some copper, but that's for the um, actual bullets and the uh, ammunition belt for the machine guns so it's very very small then we have um, flat flesh which that's for the figures but we'll deal with that later uh, we have khaki which is for the uniforms but I think it's also for the seats for the crew compartment uh, then we have flat earth which is also one of the colors for the figures, as well as neutral gray, uh, metallic gray, red brown, and rubber black. Rubber black, I will be using XF85 rubber black. Um, that's for the tires. So that is pretty much the supplies I'm gonna be using. The last tool that I will be using is my Iwata HPM2 single action airbrush. I'll be using this for the primer, for the paint, and then I'll just use an assortment of regular paint brushes for the detail painting. So there you have it. That's what's going to go on with this here build. So that is the end of this video. So next time we'll actually get started with the first steps of the kit. And I will do the steps. Um, I'll kind of judge how long it takes to do them as to how many steps I do per video. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the next in my Plastic Models for Beginners series. And if you have any hints, tips, questions, any of that kind of stuff, put them in the comments down below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. So until next time, thanks for watching and I will see you all later.